So this week I've got a really interesting glass effect that I had picked up on a, on a movie poster. It's actually a movie that's been out for some time now. It was uh, was called Children of Men with uh, Clive Owen. Rather interesting movie, uh, to say the least. But it, uh, the image that I saw this movie on, it was actually a wallpaper image I saw online, was a really interesting effect of the subject, and it had broken glass, like he was looking through a broken window, and you could just see the subject uh, kind of through the broken glass, and there was all this... Um, the cracks in the glass on the window and everything like that looks really interesting. So, I thought we'd tackle that with this subject right here. I've got this shot of this subject that looks really good, really dramatic, like you would see in a movie poster. She's kind of looking off to the side and the wind, you know, kind of blowing her hair. It looks really interesting for what we're doing. So we have a stock image of this cracked window right here. And it's uh, it's just black, uh, it's a black and white image, so it's going to work perfectly for what we're, uh, the uh, effect we're trying to generate here. So I'm just going to drag and drop it over into my layout. I'm just going to hold the shift key down so it just drops it uh, in the center of the layout. And we can minimize this document here. Now, to make the cracks of the glass visible and leaving the background so we can see our subject, it's just a matter of changing the blend mode of this layer, I'm just going to go under the blend mode menu here and change it to screen, which is going to make all the black areas invisible and leaving only the white areas to be seen over our subject. So now it looks like we've got this cracked window over the subject, but we're not going to stop there. First off, I noticed that the hole in the glass is not lined up with my subject over here on the right side. So we'll simply go under the edit menu and let's go to transform and choose flip horizontal. Now, got much better. The hole is over my subject, but I'm going to take it a step further and even go ahead and under edit again and then choose transform and this time choose flip vertical. And this is the beauty of it being a pretty abstract image like a, uh, an image of broken glass because we can see it from any angle. So there's really no right or wrong way on where we need to position this, just wherever, whatever works for this composition. All right, so now that's looking pretty good with the glass. Now what I want to do here is actually cut out a larger hole than there is in the existing in the glass because I actually want to see more of her face through this broken glass. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and grab the polygonal lasso tool and it's going to actually use these cracks that kind of you know come out, of, out from uh, the center of the hole here and just start a selection and this is where you just kind of, kind of use what's there but uh, the main concentration here is that we want to see a fair amount of her face. Not all of it. We're just going to have some areas ob uh, obstructed just for the sake of drama. But I'm going to start up here in the top area and just click and start a selection. It's going to go across here, I think down here. I'm just going to, eh, let's follow these lines here. Let's just go down a little bit here. Don't have to follow all the lines. I'm just kind of getting fairly dramatic areas here. Let's do this and just follow along the lines and try and be as random as possible so that you can see that it is broken glass and this is just an area of the window that's just kind of uh, broken through So again, being just randomly going through here and selecting different areas. And you don't have to follow all lines all the time. It's like there's an area here where there's no lines at all, but I'm just going to go ahead and create one just to make this, this image work for what I'm going for. Actually, oh, let's go up here. Something like that. So we got a fairly good... Um, a good amount going on here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and add a layer mask to this image, and since I have an active selection already, I'm going to hold down the Option key, that would be Alt on uh, Windows. As I click on the layer mask icon, it will hide what is ever actively selected, just like that. So we can see that those, that area is getting kind of knocked out, and looks like we can see more of our face. Well, this broken glass image doesn't really seem to work on its own. It really is clean other than the cracks and little nicks in the glass. It would be really clean glass and in the image I saw the glass was actually really kind of grungy and dirty. So I'm actually going to uh, use this texture here that I have. Again a simple stock texture that I found 
that's uh, got some uh, kind of a brushed uh, element to it. Really dirty. Works gonna, I think it's going to work just fine for that. So let's go ahead and take that and drag and drop it over as well. And I want to use more of the brighter areas of this texture. So I'm actually going to scale it a little bit. By putting it in free transform, I press Command-T, and let's just scale it up here a little bit there. There we go. And then I'm not going to use a blend mode, but I'm rather going to drop the opacity of this layer to around 50. And let's go ahead and bring that layer beneath the cracked glass layer in our layers panel here. So we've got that texture in there, and I need to go ahead and knock out the same area we did on the glass layer on this textured layer. And to do that really easily, since we've already made the uh, layer mask here, if you hold down the Option key again on Mac, um, Alt on Windows, and then click and drag that layer mask to the other to the the layer just below, and it will go ahead and basically copy and paste that layer mask to the new layer. Now we can see that the glass looks kind of cool, uh, pretty good. It's got a kind of a dirty grunge to it, which is uh, really the effect we're going for. It's looking pretty good. Well, let's go and take this a little bit further. I'm going to go ahead and reselect the glass layer, and I'm going to go ahead and put a layer style on this. Actually, no, let's go ahead and put it on the textured layer. That'll work. So with the textured layer itself selected, we're going to go into the layer style menu and choose bevel and emboss. And we'll just move it so we can see what's going on here. And going to go into the technique here and change it to chisel hard and really bump up the depth of this. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop the size down. I don't want the bevel to be too large. Right now it's a little big. I'm going to actually drop it down to two. And let's just play with some of the positioning of the lighting here. So we get a nice bright edge on there. So that's looking okay. But I want to en enhance those edges a little bit more by adding a contour to this. Notice we've got the bevel and emboss selected. I'm going to add the contour on here and then go inside the contour menu and choose the third one in the second row here, which is ring double. And that's, you can see that gives that edge or that glass edge a little bit more rough, um, roughness to it. If I turn it on and off, you can see the difference there. It might even be a little bit too much. Let's just try the one next to it, a little single row. There we go. That looks pretty good. And this is, of course, all handled or by the... Uh, lighting in here. So if I adjust the lighting um, angle in here a little bit, you can see it gives me that much more of an interesting result there. Puts a little bit more dimension on the edge of the glass there. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. Now what I want to do is, before I, I click out of here, I don't want to do it, um, any more to the bevel emboss, but I do want to add a drop shadow so we can see. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and move it manually. If I just move my layer style menu panel over, just drag that shadow down a little bit. And this really gives the sense that she's really close to the glass and it's got the drama of the light being cast on her and everything like that. And I think that looks pretty good. All right. So now we're looking pretty good. We've got the cracks in the glass. I think this area right here really can go away. There's this little tiny sliver right, right there. I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Let's get and get a good size brush here. Painting with black on that layer mask, I'm just going to brush those areas away so they're not entirely obstructing my subject there. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. Now, one more thing I want to do. It looks pretty good, but the overall atmosphere and colors really don't kind of mesh together. It looks like just this, this, color, this really bright color photo in front of this really kind of grungy, dramatic glass. So here's an interesting effect to do. I'm going to do a couple of things to um, enhance the lighting and overall um, atmosphere of this. First thing is, I'm going to put a new layer above the original layer itself, below these two uh, other layers we've got. I'm just going to grab the gradient tool, and using the foreground to transparent gradient, I'm going to set the foreground color to white. You just simply press D on the keyboard to get the default colors, and then X to flip those colors around. So now we're going from white to black. So I'm going to start in the very middle of my subject. Notice I'm on the empty blank layer here. Drag that gradient out all the way. So we get a nice light area in the middle and it gets darker as it goes out. And then I'm going to simply change the blend mode of that layer from normal to multiply. So you can see if I turn it on and off, it gets a, just made a little bit more of a light effect on the subject here. Now, reselect that very top layer of the image. I'm going to hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, and then go into the Layer Flyout menu here and choose Merge Visible. 
This will create a merged copy of all the visible layers in the image, bringing it to the very top here. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and apply a hue saturation color effect to this. Go under image adjustments and then choose hue saturation. And inside here we're going to check on colorize and set the hue to 200 and the saturation to 40. And leave the lightness at zero and click OK. And then merely change the blend mode of this layer once again from this time from normal to soft light. And notice the change there. It's really kind of just going from, yeah, it looks kind of composited well there to making it look that much more dramatic, giving it kind of this blue cast on it, almost like a photo filter, which you could even try the photo filter feature in Photoshop, probably give you a similar effect. But I like the way uh, I get, I like the result I get by colorizing the layer and then blending it using this soft light blend mode. But that is pretty much how you can achieve a very similar effect as to what I saw in the uh, movie poster where you can get um, really a sense of drama and depth by adding a few simple stock images to create this broken window effect.